Oh, what a little doll you are. Oh, what a sweet little doll. In fact, this is a little doll. That's what it is. It's um, made of a sort of a uh, plastic-like material, and it is just one example of some of the fabulous dolls that are here at the International Doll Expo. And uh, doll really is a misnomer because what we're talking about are works of art. Let me show you. Dolls have, of course, long had some kind of a special, almost mystical appeal. Uh, and what they've done is turn them into pieces of sculpture. Uh, so, for example, they've set these tableaus now, and there's a lot of realism in the faces. This is the uh, Hildegard Gunzel Company. They're out of, where are you out of? Germ out of Duisburg, Germany. Yeah, this is Germany, yeah. <laughs> and uh, to make these, are these one, I'm sorry, not these, these. Are these one of a kind, each one yeah, of these? No, this is a limited edition of 10 and the other ones of 40. So it, retail, how much are we talking about for something like this? This one is $16,000. <gasps> And the other one, uh, approximately five or six thousand dollars. So this one, sixteen, yeah, is sixteen thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is spectacular. Yeah. It's really remarkable. And they are made of porcelain. Yeah. Did you just say? Yeah. Okay. So that would be one kind of a doll. Another popular kind of a doll, and they're also uh, not entirely cheap, are these little baby dolls. They're becoming quite popular. Take a look at this line over here. This is Rita Rich Originals. So many of these are one of a kind, right? Um, these are my resin editions. These are one of a kind over here. So these guys over here, look at how realistic they are. Although I must say mine were never this quiet. How did you, <laughs> where did you find models that were this quiet at this age? <laughs> now, they are also weighted very well so that when you hold one first of all you see they're they're sort of floppy the way a real baby might be and when you hold one you really feel like you're holding a baby i must say uh you make these out of what material Is it's a uh, german polymer clay called cernit and you just sculpt it does it take you a long time to do one of these so realistically um, it varies you know sometimes i can do a head in a day but usually it it's more like two or three or four. <laughs> well, they really are remarkable. Uh, the thing about many of the dolls here at the show is that the facial expressions vary so much. I mean, you know, forget about your Barbie dolls that all look alike. Uh, the finer dolls have got, well, just a tremendous lifelike look. Uh, and obviously these are uh, not necessarily, at these prices, they're not necessarily dolls that you're going to hand a little three-year-old to play with. Who are your customers? Uh, there are collectors from, from all over the place that uh, do one of a kind because, you know, that's the only one they're going to have in the whole world. Right. And they're so these are collectibles. They're collectible. not just dolls. Okay. Come on over here and let me show you a little bit on the costume front. These are made in Russia, for example, and the detail on some of them is just gorgeous. Dean, go ahead and take a look at this one over here. And these folks over here, the hats are beautiful, the beadwork. Uh, now, the woman who does these uh, in Moscow actually uh, started in theater, and you can see that there's a tremendous th theatrical appeal. This show is technically not open to the public, uh, at least not today, but on Saturday afternoon, well, later today, and Sunday, you will be able, the public will be able to attend. Mostly this is for buyers and, you know, large companies. Uh, here's somebody selling accessories for dolls. You can get, uh, obviously, your little necklaces here and uh, some lovely little crowns. If your doll is musically inclined, this delightful violin. And for the big readers in your dollhouse, there are even some books. Uh, one of the most unusual displays is this one over here. In fact, there's a whole, excuse me, I'm just yeah, going to show folks. This is one of the most unusual categories, the historical right. style of doll. And this is a, these dolls are based on a picture taken in the Ludge Ghetto during World War II. And these are dolls during World War II, or modeled after children in World War II yeah. ghettos. And there's an Anne Frank doll. Thanks very much for letting us look. Uh, and of course, on a lighter note, a little bit of Pinocchio, a lot of fantasy dolls. We're seeing a lot of that at the show here. And I've heard that angel dolls are a big deal. Some of them, these high-end dolls, using real feathers. Well, it's happy birthday time, ladies and gentlemen, because in fact, the so-called teddy bear is exactly 100 years old. And uh, there's a lot of celebration going on about that happy birthday. Now, the story on teddy bears, you may know, is that President Theodore Roosevelt, that's right, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, allegedly, and this is maybe apocryphal, refused to shoot a bear that had been tied up just to 
give him an opportunity to catch a bear. And he said, no, I'm not going to shoot that bear because that would not be sporting. And the story got around, and a shopkeeper in Brooklyn, among other things, am I telling the story right so far? Uh, in Brooklyn, came up with a teddy bear, a bear. Well, well, he was Theodore, so they, they called him, his nickname became Teddy. Along the fashion front, Jordash and several other companies are now working with this company called Saba. These are fashion attitude dolls, and the dolls have outfits, whoops, and the children, can, the girls, can buy these outfits so that they and their dolls can all uh, wear the same clothing, and they come with a shopping bag, appropriately enough, containing uh, private, little unmentionables and boots, naturally. And then over here, finally, the, the Playboy doll. This is brand new right here. We'll <laughs> move some of these unmentionable ones out. These are brand new, this, this line. And so who would be the collector on these? Well, but I was thinking, like, who? Oh. Like, who would buy these? Men. <laughs> you know, I had a feeling. See? <laughs> All right, so men, women, and children over the age of 18. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there are lots of great dolls to see. It's at the Bill Graham Civic <clears throat> Auditorium. Today, 2 to 5, open to the public. Tomorrow, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., there's admission of $10. Uh, the phone number, it's an Atlanta number, but it does forward through here, 404-378. 2217. For more details, you can uh, check out the website at www.cron4.com. Look under Cron4 Morning Weekend or Weekend Morning, and we've got all the details. I never thought I'd like a doll show so much. You were ooing and I, I had no oh. idea it was such big business. Oh. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because it's sometimes hard to sell. I want to cover this doll show. Yeah, and right. All the producers <laughs> go, yeah, yeah, right. But what's interesting is that there are so many dolls at some of those high prices, and people are buying them because they're making them. It's a big collector's thing. You know, you go on eBay, or a lot of, in fact, mm. the one of the people, those little, that little doll I was holding, the husband of the artist told me 75% of his business is over the internet. Oh. Wow. Okay. Did you buy any? Oh, I can't. <laughs> Too rich for my taste. Either this or a new car. What yeah. are we going to do? Yeah. I'll stick to Barbies. Thank you. <laughs>